Let's bow our heads and pray. Our Father, we thank you again as we come here to learn from your word. We do pray that you bless all that we are sharing. Give us understanding and clarity into thy truth. And bless us, O Lord. We pray for your Holy Spirit to come and help convict us and correct us. And give us the grace as we desire, as our sister, the sister's desire to, to obey you in this matter. Ensuring they do not become object of sexual impurity to others. They will guide their lives by honor and holiness, sobriety, and all that is needed that you have commanded in your word. Help us, Lord. As we go into marital chastity, we pray for both married and married to learn again a few things that we have to share here. And your name be glorified in our midst. Thank you, Lord God, and blessed be your name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I got some questions online, like to my phone. Oh, my phone is not here, so I will deal with it later on. I think I know the question of, of her too. Um, and there are some people listening to us from Ghana. Charlie, if you are hearing me, I uh, hope they will uh, stay tuned to the end. Now we will go into this next session, and I want to do like 15, 20 minutes, because uh, we still have a breakout session and a thought session, and we have to go home. We also have classes to teach after now. And it's uh, an issue of marital chastity. We have, like, again, I said we have a retreat on Wednesday at Lekki, Thursday at SGBC, that is marriage retreat. It's going to be a quarterly thing also, where all of this will be discussed more. But that's for married too. This um, is strictly to those who are married, but the married can learn from it. Um, you know, when we were planning this conference, we, were, we said, let us plan the first seminar targeting the, sis the younger, the unmarried sisters. But then that's, we have spread it across both married and unmarried. That's why we say let us take one topic out to deal specifically with the marry, married. Now, this topic is uh, a very, very um, dear one to me because I started studying it and I, I found so many things that were interesting. A bit I've shared last time about uh, the mar matrimonial bed and home as regards especially our sisters. Um, Matrimonial chastity describes the purity in soul and body with respect to matrimonial duties. The word chastity itself is necessary for, to, to, for both singles and married. And we are told to be holy and chaste. It's not only for my people, it's for both singles and married. And it is, it is to restrain your body from sexual immorality or purities, whether you are single or in wedlock. In marriage or in wedlock, it's called marital chastity. And that text in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 to 8 now, has a bit of it before we see other texts here. Let me read again, because it's our, it's our main text for this seminar. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from 3 to 8. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you shall abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you, and if you see, you look at, I don't know if your Bible has it, abstain from sexual immorality, then a semicolon. Those who went to school, like teachers, what is a semicolon, what does it do? Does it explain, Abby? Yeah, so. We didn't go to school on time. That each of you should know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all, of all such, as we have also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. So the, the will of God described here is for both singles and married. 
Uh, so while the singles are told to modify their deeds of their body, the married have been given a platform to seek satisfaction for their sexual desires. And this platform is with their spouse in marriage. Someone described chastity in wedlock as the virtue by which married parties observe the lawful and honest use of marriage to keep their bodies from being defiled with strange flesh. And if you listen to that definition, you will see two components of the definition. First is lawful and honest use of marriage. Second is keep their bodies from being defiled with from strange flesh. And so if you, if you take these two together, something comes to mind. And it is marriage is a means of keeping us holy and undefiled. Marriage is a means of keeping us holy and undefiled. Marriage is meant to keep us holy and chaste so that with one spouse, we can remain pure. All sexual needs are supposed to be met in marriage so that we don't go about defining ourselves and others. And this is what marital chastity is. And it's best described in Hebrews 13, verse 4. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable among all the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. This mean, means that the bed and what, what happens there does not defile you. So that with your spouse, you can still, and you are still holy and chaste. Marriage is honorable amongst all, and the bed undefiled. That's why in Titus 2, 4 to 5, young women are told to be chaste. What, I mean, if you've been defiled by marriage, right at bed, then there's no, there's no reason to be telling you to be chaste. Love your husband, he says. Be discreet, be chaste. Be a homemaker, be good, be obedient to your husband, and all that. Part of what you said about this woman is to be chaste. And this is because if you keep the law of wedlock, which is sticking to your man, cutting off from all other sexual immoralities and impurities and sensualities, you will still be chaste and holy in the Lord, just as a virgin. Marriage does not make you less chaste or less holy than a woman who, does, who knows no man. There's this thing. It is in the Roman Catholic. Someone said it's from Roman Catholic now. And it is people are told to take up the gift of celibacy so that they can be pure. Remember, fathers are not go near women. No. Marriage, the bed is undefiled, it's honorable. It's not a dishonor to your womanhood. And the bed is on the fire. How does it apply? How does this affect us? First, that, that you are married does not take anything away from you in serving the Lord with a holy and clean hand, with dignity and honor. Nothing has changed in that sense. I'm not saying your body has not changed. I'm not saying your body has not changed. But in that sense, God sees you as holy, as chaste, as you can be. You can still be as spiritual as you were before. No marriage. So, it's, so, so some, like, I, like I said, the Roman Catholic thing that things that you have to stay off marriage before you can, uh, you can become holy. So, uh, many people also, and I, would, I, would, I, would, I will talk about the issue of praying and fasting and having separate time later on. But 
First, catch that Hebrews 10, Hebrews 13. First, catch it. It's honorable. The bed is on the filing. And so what that means is, first of all, it's you have no business. Anything sensual that comes from outside should be extinguished by your marital bed. And indeed, the reason, and we'll see later, the reason why we still struggle is because we don't guard or see the dignity of our marital bed. And so, we, we think there's something, the grass, the grass is greener out there, or we yield to external things that come. Some people don't have to go to meet another person, but what you watch, what you do, and all the things that makes you happy outside your husband, I'm knocking on your door to cost you not to be chaste and holy. In fact, my people should be the one, they, they should be the one that should be holiest. Because if they have sexual desires, there's a way to meet it. Unlike single people who have to mortify the deeds of their flesh. Number two, because you are undefiled and you are, it's honorable, you can't just, that's what I want to address my sister, you can't just throw in the towel. You can't just derale, you're about to say so. Just, okay, after we are married, I have four children. I'm doing, nah, please. And cover your body, sisters, when you are breastfeeding. Don't be the first nude picture your son, your children will see. You can't allow that. So you have to, the, like I said, the body is, is, is special. Carry it with dignity. Can't just relax. Be chaste. Be holy. The way as if you are as though you are, you are nobody has touched you. And that's why everything that has to do with my tablet should be exclusive. Exclusive. No intruder. Friends, family, children, no intruder. And that's where chastity comes in. That's why I say, see, it has to be husband and wife to hear this. Uh, but I will do my best um, to just talk to what affects our sisters. And let me address quickly, and we'll talk about it in our breakout session, single sisters. Some, of, some single sisters, before conversion, have lost their virginity. And they think, oh, all is gone. Nah. Once you have repented and come to Christ, you are chasing the Lord. Stand up and be chaste and holy. If a guy says, ah, I don't marry you, leave the guy fast, fast. Come and tell us. We'll, we'll know what to do. Leave the guy. All things have passed away. All things are new. This will be dealt with at the breakout session. Start afresh. Be holy. Possess your body in holiness and honor. That's what this also does to you. And once you get married... I don't care what has happened, it's gone. And see, that's why when you want to get married for single sisters, you have to talk to the person you are getting married to. Let them know. And then you test spirituality. If the person is confused, come and talk to the elders. We will show you scriptures. Let me address 1 Corinthians 7 verse 5. That says, do not deprive one another except consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and praying and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of lack of self-control. Now, this text, people have said, shows that the mitre bed can spoil your prayer and fast. No. No. The mitre bed does not defy prayer and fasting. And if you know what fasting is, fasting is, this, is for the sole purpose of spending time with God in prayer and cutting away distractions and personal enjoyment and humbling yourself. There's nothing humbling about being with your husband on the bed. So, we give up things that pleases you. Your phone, your movies, your food, and of course, your time with your husband. And even Apostle said, don't let it be short. Don't do 41 days fasting. <laughs> because you, get, you might be on the mountain, but he is in the valley. He says, come together quickly, 
so that Satan does not tempt you because of his of lack of self-control. If Bessie was on my, you would say, have self-control. Abi? But because Bessie is married, why? That's why I'm married. Come back together. And this goes to tell some of, some of us, some of sisters or brothers, that that's, that's, you have to be here together. I deny yourselves. Sometimes we push other, other, our spouse to uh, go off this issue of marital uh, chastity. Again, Hebrews 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled of fornicators and adulterers God with church. And if you look, look, look at that text again and again, if you read it many times, it's when you hear that marriage is honorable, it means it ought to be held dear and esteemed by both parties. But when marriage is seen as a chore, or what happens at the mitre bed as a chore or bondage, for whatsoever reason, you will not guard it. And if not guarded, it becomes less honorable. And then, before you know it, unwanted intruders will come. Your thoughts, number one. Things coming. And see, I'm not talking about you people with somebody with another man. No, <laughs> not you. At least as I know. But there are intruders that are, they are as bad as having another man on your bed. Thoughts, movies, all those sensual things that come in. Imaginations. You are back as though you're not married. You know, before you got married, you're like, oh, I'm burning. I need, I'm burning. Then now you're married, you're still burning. That is where you start to lose marital chastity. When you are not able to guard the dignity and honor of marriage. See, it takes two to tango. I'm not saying it's your work alone, but you must do your part. You must put in the shift to ensure that you don't bring in into that. Not even Kosiso or Calvin. Not even the children should be an intruder. They will soon become, some of you are, some of, Bukumi is in my house. Uh, father called me yesterday. She's gone. They will soon go now. They do NYC. They will post and they will go. <laughs> me and post, Abby. <laughs> I don't stay here. How do I be chased as a married woman? Let me just give you three. Because I don't stay long here because it will be too one-sided if I do two stars alone. We'll talk about it. Husband and wife. How do I become chaste as a married woman? Number one, God has given know that God has given you your spouse to protect you from sexual immorality and all kind of defi devi de defiling vices. And I'm not just concocting something. First Corinthians chapter seven verse nine says, nevertheless. Because of sexual immorality, let each, man have each, let each man have his own wife, and each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The Bible knows what it's saying. One of the main reasons for marriage is to protect your chastity. So two things, is if you are straining, strain your thoughts, strain away. Your marriage, something's wrong with your marriage. Fix it. Call the attention of your husband to it. Tell your husband that I, my desires are not met. If you know Greek, call the elders. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also going to be held by this same standard. My wife is there. Call the is it until you go, you start to, you bring in an intruder? Because it's supposed, it was meant to protect you. That's why the two of you must hear this. That's number one. So how can I be chased? Make sure that you get full value for your marriage. Number two, Proverbs uh, 5, verse 19. Look at what it says. 
as a loving dear and as a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. So as a man is supposed to be satisfied with his wife, so also women must be satisfied at all times in their husband. And this is the honor of marriage. The satisfaction and chastity of marriage is the honor of marriage. When there is no satisfaction and chastity in marriage, when all you have is complain, before you know it, there will be breakdown in chastity. Because when the person, there's always complain, complain, fight, complain, complain. You will look for alternatives. When you, when, 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 you, when your spouse becomes so uncomfortable because you are too naggy and quarrel, quarrelsome, your spouse, your husband, will seek alternative. Yeah, I'm not saying they find that woman. No. They might find that friend. Because part of my chastity is that you don't have a bestie. As your wife is your first bestie. Then others can be can have other friends. But your wife, is, your wife is the one you want to really talk to. Vice versa, your husband. Can't be another man. Can't be. Some of you, your husband is a friend. The, your friend is like a husband. You are not chaste. You are not chaste. If you, you are closer to another man than your wife, or the husband, rather, something is wrong with you. Now, if you have unconverted uh, spouse, it doesn't matter. Two of you are quarreling, okay. But if you are quarreling, you must be repenting and trying to pursue peace with, peace with him. That's why before you get married, we say, please marry in the Lord. The, so men are told to satisfy. You too must be satisfied. You must work it out. So the, temptation will come when the house is more comfortable. Hmm? They might seek other means of companionship. And that is where chastity is is threatened in the home. Three, a chaste marriage is watertight. No one's allowed to come in between the couple. I mentioned it. No thoughts. And I'm saying this very discreetly. Even on the marital bed, no thoughts, no pictures, no imaginations, no movie whatsoever is allowed. It has to be two of you. You turn to yourself alone for your conjugal right and duties, period. See, these things does not happen by just saying, abracadabra. Or let me read Psalm, Psalm 24, and I inside water and drink it. I'm joking. You cultivate it. You cultivate it. And I, I don't want to use the wrong word. I don't, I don't want to say you are stuck. I'm not, I'm not stuck with her or him. This is my wife. This is my husband. What I see is what I get. If you like, let after childbirth, the person now sleep or fat. What I see is what I get. This is supposed to be for the guys. And vice versa. And vice versa. Your, your bodies change more. Uh, when I start hitting for that's why, please, when your husbands are trying to buy you cake, cakes and creams, pizza, Tell them no. <laughs> <laughs> because they would be able to buy the cake and creams. They would say that you are, you are growing fat. Okay, stop buying it now. Say no. Say no. Nobody. No thoughts. No pictures, no imaginations, no movies. And you can do it. You can. Even when you are going and something flashes your mind, you run home to your husband. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. And vice versa. A woman just comes and splashes all her body for a man. Yeah. I have the type at home. Go. Go to your, house, your husband. Because you need to preserve chastity. That picture cannot be in your head and vice versa. Like I said, it is cultivation. And sisters, who are not married. See, the bar is very high. You, your body will soon tell you, marry. 
Thing I just might just sit down will happen. Nothing will happen. You must work at it. You must work at it. If anything is wrong, or if anyone is, is needed for you guys to perform your conjugal rights, it's, you need a third party, the bed is defiled. And no longer chase. Last, lastly, uh, when sexual desires are amply satisfied, chastity is preserved because the temptation to go outside marriage is removed. I can't say this enough for our sisters, our brothers and sisters. Proverbs 5. I read it earlier on, but it was verse 20. Uh, let me read for 19 and 20. Proverbs 5, 19 and 20. As a loving dear, as a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a sedu seductress? This is for men, but flip it, the same for women. Okay. Did I say lastly? No, there's one more. Chastity in marriage covers all defects. And this one is so true if you have experienced such in your home. When you are faithful to some, 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 somebody, you will, you will easily forgive that person. You don't have anywhere to go. Abby? Yeah. And so, oh boy, me I could forgive fast, fast. <laughs> Quickly. They, it, but when already that side of the bed is off, there's no motivation to forgive me. Let's stay on our lane. But when you are faithful, you forgive easily. Chastity blinds you to your husband's fault and imperfection. You can tell the best thing, but you still forgive. You know what say? I'm here because of my son. For we, God did not marry you to your son or your daughter. He married you to your husband. And God blesses a chaste marriage. He, see, you might have difficulties. You might, again, maybe when, you, when, when sisters are doing counseling, and our brothers have to be taught also, each person has peculiarities. You have to know yourself. You have to know your, uh, uh, your wife is a four-unit course. Your husband is a three-and-a-half-unit course. You guys, you guys are more, Abby. Yeah. Know yourself. God blesses chastity. Titus 1.15. To the pure, all things are pure. To those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their minds are, and conscience are defiled. But to the pure... All things are pure. And if that's Hebrews 13, I just didn't read everything. If you read the Hebrews 13, 4 to 6, you see the blessing that comes with this home, the bed that's undefiled. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Let your conduct be without covetousness, which is telling you within the context. Be content with what you have. For God himself has said... I will never leave you nor forsake you, so we may say boldly, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do with, to me. It's in the context of marriage. And the marital bed that's undefiled. Be content with what you have, the Bible says. So the issue of marital chastity, you, you, can't, you can't end it. It is, it is what keeps the home. There's a, there, it's a two-part thing. Mitre unity and mitre chastity, but I'm just taking this one to talk about. So we can start to, for those of us who are married, start to look at ourselves and say, one, I can be chaste and holy. And you are in the Lord, even though you are married. You are not defiled. The mitre bed is undefiled, which means you can participate in worship. You are useful. Carry yourself as such. You are holy. Till you die, you are as holy as though you have not met a man. In the Old Testament, they say, oh, is a woman, this, no. In, in Christ, we are holy and righteous. And then we need to guard it, especially the issue of intruders coming in, 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 in thoughts, in images, in our heads, all those things that comes in that want to be a propeller when you are with your spouse, they are all intruders. 
you must ensure that you fight it because it's defiling your marriage. It's always your marriage ought to be you and your husband. Nothing more, nothing else. No movie, nothing. You and your husband. Two alone, not third part. Let's bow heads and pray. I will leave it here. Do the rest later. Our Lord, again, we thank you for your mercies and how you bring these things to us to see what we ought to learn, what we ought to do. We do pray. Thank you for covering us with the blanket of righteousness. And even our mighty bed is undefiled. But also that your name is glorified in our midst as we keep our, vow our vows and do that which you have commanded us to do, to be holy and chaste as women. We do pray that our sisters will take this to heart and, and trust you and to do that which is needful and, and draw from your blessings and grace that you have promised to those who ensure that they are chaste and holy. To the pure, all things are pure. Oh, you make everything pure and clear to us. Thank you, merciful Father, and blessed be your name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.